The flag of Uganda stands out from a sea of pan-African green, yellow, and red flags that are commonplace throughout the continent. It has a very nice composition and it's pleasing to the eye. But why is the crane standing on one leg? How did they choose a crane in the first place? And what are those traditional subnational flags in Uganda? In this video, we'll answer these questions and more, so let's begin. The current Ugandan flag was adopted in October 1962 when they gained independence from the British Empire. But first, let's look at some history. Before the arrival of the British, the area was ruled by various kingdoms since the Middle Ages, some of which were later restored as traditional subnational kingdoms. And I'll make sure to go over these individual flags later in this video. Now, the British Protectorate of Uganda was established in 1894, and like many other British overseas territories, it was granted a blue ensign with its own badge. And the badge they used on that flag was that of the grey crowned crane, which was worn by the Ugandan soldiers during the British rule, and it's the one we see on the modern flag today. As independence approached, there were two major political parties in Uganda. The ruling Democratic Party proposed this design for the new national Ugandan flag. It had vertical stripes of green, blue, and green, separated by narrow yellow stripes, and in the center there was a silhouette of a yellow crane. The Democratic Party lost the national elections in April 1962, and the newly elected Uganda People's Congress, which had this tricolor, rejected the former proposal, and instead proposed this current design based on their tricolor at the time. This design was sent to the British and they approved it before they granted the country their independence. Now when it comes to the colors and how the country assigns meaning to them, we have black, yellow, and red, which represent the native ethnic groups of Africa, Africa's sunshine, and the African Brotherhood, red being the color of blood through which all Africans are connected. The grey crowned crane used on the old flag of the British Protectorate of Uganda was selected as the national animal and displayed on the new flag. This was due to its gentle nature and because it was the military badge of the Ugandan soldiers during the British rule. The reason why the crane stands on one leg and raises the other is to symbolize the forward movement of the country, and it's also used as a supporter on the national coat of arms. Now remember all the monarchies I mentioned earlier? They were all banned when the country gained independence in order to unite the people. But in 1993, the following kingdoms were brought back as traditional subnational kingdoms. The Kingdom of Buganda is probably one of the most important kingdoms in the country. They used this triband flag and they lent their name to the country. That's because Uganda is the Swahili name for Buganda. And that's the one that the British officials went with. Bonioro is another traditional kingdom and they used this flag while Bosoga has this tricolor with their coat of arms in the white circle. The kingdom of Ruwenzororo uses this tricolor with a monkey sitting on a tree branch, but Toro has this blue and yellow banner with two lions and a drum. Inside the country, its institutions use different versions of this flag, such as the presidential standard, as well as these two from the Ugandan Defense Force and the Air Force. If you're looking for something else to watch right now, you can check out our previous flag videos, or browse the playlist for more country flags. And if you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, and leave a comment with any suggestions, corrections, or extra information you might have. And I will see you next time on Council of Knowledge.